Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Welcome again to Growing in Grace on this fine radio station. I'm Joel Debris Man with Cap- <laughs> Mike Kapler coming up next. Shooby doo wah wah. <laughs> oh, you started one off funny a few weeks ago, and that just popped in my mind as we started recording here. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it was an accident, I assure you. <laughs> Oh, I hey. miss those old radio uh, DJs, though. Those, you know, those from the seventies and eighties. <laughs> oh, Wolfman Jack, that style, you know. Oh man, those some of those Smooth guys were cool. so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Radio kind of had a different feel to it back then. I mean, the world changes, and yeah, you, you kind of miss some of the the things of old. Even things before my time, Joel. I, I like going back and picking up either on on historical things or old movies and. Uh, it's just interesting to me to, to watch some of that and see the, the difference in time compared to what we have now. Yeah, so so much has changed, like you say. Time goes on and things change. And that's, you know, one thing it just brings to mind about how God never changes. We change, but God never changes. And and so a lot of times, the thing about what God has done is that it is it is a finished work, what Jesus Christ has done. It's a finished work. And sometimes my life will change, and if this sufficiency that we have was based upon ourselves and having to remain the same, like I was saved and made righteous, so now I have to, I have to do this, I have to maintain this righteousness, I can't change, I can't ever sin, I can't ever do anything bad, because if I do, then I lose it. But God never changes. And the fact that our salvation is based upon the blood of Jesus Christ, that we're saved by grace through faith in what he has done, not in what we do, that makes, even though I change from day to day, from moment to moment, my emotions go up and down, my feelings change, my activities change, but God, he never changes, he stays the same. And so our sufficiency, we can, <laughs> we can rest and uh, his sufficiency and the fact that he never changes, that, that encourages me when I think about things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that, that's a solid rock to be standing on, for sure. Well, hey, uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the lost son or the prodigal son parable, bringing out some things that uh, I really haven't heard taught before. And maybe somebody's teaching it. I just hadn't heard it. Referring to the younger son and the older son, the younger being the Gentile son, the older being the Jewish son. We often put this focus on individuals when looking at these sons, but we believe that very possibly we can look at this from the perspective of two groups of people with the Gentiles and, and the Jews. And I think the other thing too, Joel, with, the, with what we've covered up to this point is the, the, the older son hadn't yet realized that the, the same thing that had been given to the younger son after he came home had also been given to him. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he, right. he, he had been under the command. He had been a servant trying to be as dedicated as he could. But this gift of dwelling with the father in, in the household was, was available to him as well. And um, I think there's so much within this parable that we, we can jump into, but I'm so impressed with the love of the Father toward us as Gentiles. I mean, the, the parable said that the Father divided their inheritance among them. Well, the, the Gentiles went their own way. They weren't any less loved by God, but when the time was right and, and Christ broke down that, that dividing wall of, of the law and the commandments, that, that barrier, when that was abolished, then he was able to bring the, the two back into the household again with the same father and, and make them as one. God had established this covenant with Israel, and now the Gentiles were allowed to be a, a part of it. Of course, there was the old covenant with the house of Israel, but remember, there would become a new covenant that God would establish with the house of Israel through Jesus Christ. And we as Gentiles, we were invited into the household, into the covenant, into Christ really, because Christ is the covenant. And there's just a a quick summary of what we've been talking about here with the uh, lost son parable. Yeah, this uh, this new covenant. I mean, uh, in in Hebrews 8, 
you know, it talks about, you know, God talks about this, you know, finding fault with them, that was the people who were under that old covenant, and that was the Jews, and the reason he found fault with them was because they didn't keep the covenant. (laughs) He kept his part, they didn't keep theirs, and uh, this isn't to just put blame on the Jews, because if any one of us would have been part of that covenant, he would have found fault with us too. But he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And I know that some people say, well, see, this new covenant is only for Judah and for Israel. But we see all of these things that we've been talking about the last few weeks go to show that the Gentiles were brought into this thing as well. And, you know, speaking of uh, sufficiency, uh, what I was talking about earlier, Paul in 2 Corinthians 3, when he was writing to Gentiles, the Gentile church, he says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So this new covenant is for all. It's for Jews and Gentiles alike. Now, we've been saying that a lot these last few weeks, Jews and Gentiles, and it's very important uh, because you know, maybe to us in our modern day and age, we just don't see, we don't understand what was really going on in these early days in the church and, and prior to Christ and his shed blood. We don't really see that there was this chosen people. They were the chosen people of God, Israel, and nobody else was welcomed in. Nobody. Everybody else in the whole entire world was excluded. And God said, you know what? (laughs) It's not going to be that way forever, because I'm going to let these Gentiles, these people who weren't included before, these people who were far off, I'm going to let these people into this thing as well, into Christ. And in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, but we're one in Christ. And so that is so important for us, uh, even today in the church, to understand. Well, for sure. And and it's also important to understand context, too, because we're obviously not going to do it on this short podcast. But if you really want to go back a couple of chapters, you, you, the, the lost son parable that we've been talking about in Luke 15, and just go back to like Luke 13 and see what Jesus starts saying to Israel and tells them, I mean, he's basically com- compelling them to Come in through the, the narrow door. Come in, come in through the gate because the gate won't always be open. And then when that happens, I'm going to be inviting people from the north, the south, the east, and the west to come in. And so he's already uh, indicating, uh, even back in Luke 13, he, he's starting to talk. To, he's talk, speaking to Israel, but he's hinting that others are going to be invited in. And um, you can check it out for yourself. And then in, in, it goes on into Luke 14, the chapter before the prodigal son. And I'm going there right now, Joel, but I think there's something else that's interesting, an interesting parallel here in relation to what we've been talking about, not only with the prodigal son, but uh, that that parallel with Ephesians chapter 2. Yeah, I'm lost. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me pull it. I just pulled it up. Um, there, I, I was trying to find it, too, at the same time. <laughs> well, and, and Jesus is talking in parables here, here again, but there's the parable of the dinner uh, in, in Luke 14, and there was this... A man was giving a big dinner, uh, invited many. The ones who were invited, by the way, were were those in in Israel, is is really what the story is about here. Uh, But there were those who were giving excuses as to why they wouldn't come. Well, I bought some oxen, and I'm going to take them out, and excuse me, I won't make it. Another one said, well, I I just got married, I I won't be able to come. Uh, Another one said, well, I've got this to do, I've got that to do, I bought a piece of land. And so the servant of of the man who was giving the big dinner reported this to the master, and he said, well, I want you to go out, and he was mad, you know, he said, go on out into the streets and invite the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. Tell them to get in here then, if these others are going to turn, if these others are going to turn it down, people who were maybe looked down upon, uh, and, and they said, well, we, we've done that, there's still room in the house, and they said, okay, well, go out into the highways and along the hedges, I'm a new American standard here, the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled 
We've been talking a lot about God's household lately. My house, I want it full. So you're going to go out beyond the highways and along the hedges. That word hedges, Joel, it's the same Greek word as barrier in Ephesians chapter 2, referring to the the barrier of the dividing wall, which was the law and the commandments that Jesus tore down. Hmm. That is something you know, to see that, because that sheds light on so much in the New Covenant, so much of what the New Covenant is about. God (laughs) so loved, again, the world, everybody in the world, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles as well, that he did something that was needed, because the Gentiles were far off. They are the ones being spoken about in Luke 14, what you were just reading there, the ones who were Along the highways and the hedges, the barriers, because that word uh, that you're talking about there means it's something that divides people and keeps them from being together. It keeps It's something that keeps people separated. So the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and along those hedges, along those places where, where people are divided. And look at what Jesus did in his ministry on the earth here. Uh, he himself did that. You will find him in places where he came originally to minister to the Jews, but you'll find him ministering to those who were cast out by the rest of society, those dirty, rotten Gentiles. And he was mocked, and he was persecuted for doing that. He just shouldn't be doing that type of thing, because that's, in the Jewish society, in their minds, uh uh-uh, this is for God, this is, God's house is for Jews only. But like you brought out of there, come in, compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Yeah, it's it's interesting, Joel, because then it, he goes on into Luke 15 with uh, uh, the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. There, there's a point being made here over a period of chapters. And what you were referring to, uh, whether it's interpreted in English as barrier, hedge, wall, it literally means that which separates and prevents two from coming together. Oh, wow. well, of course, the, mm-hmm. the Jews and the Gentiles did come together. I, 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 I got to pull up this verse. I know we're almost out of time. Paul in Colossians chapter 1, the mystery which has been hidden from the past ages and generations, but has now been manifested to his saints, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is, let me repeat that, Christ in you, Gentiles. That's what he said here. God willed to make this known among the Gentiles. Christ in you. Amen to that. that and that's so important. Oh, my goodness. You know, if, if only everybody would realize this and understand this, uh, because, you know, our call still is to tell anybody and everybody, you know, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, uh, not counting their sins against them. A lot of times, Paul had to spend some time in his letters telling the Jews, especially in Romans, telling them that, hey, just because you had the law, just because you were God's house, (laughs) doesn't mean that you are the ones who are righteous, uh, because it's anybody, by grace, through faith, who can become righteous, Gentiles included. So that's uh, so important for people to understand. Self-righteous people and dirty, rotten sinners who don't think anything of themselves. God has called everybody to himself and uh, whoever, whosoever will. And that's really what the gospel is about. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezicki. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.